This is Serious Writer. Hello and welcome to Serious Writer Club. We have special guest Vincent Davis here with us. And we're excited to talk about marketing and selling books, especially on Amazon. And uh, so, yeah, we are glad that you're here checking out this episode. It will be beneficial to you. I know uh, I've seen I've seen Vince's bio, but I also know who Vince it is. I know he sold over a hundred thousand books, and so in his uh, Roman uh, series. And so uh, I'm I'm very excited about this actually because I love Italy and Rome. We'll talk about here uh, briefly in a bit. And so Bethany, why don't you share the bio for Vincent, and we can get into it. All right, that sounds amazing. All right. Vincent B. Davis II writes historical fiction books to keep the past alive through the power of storytelling. He is also an entrepreneur, speaker, and veteran who is a proud graduate of East Tennessee State University and was honorably discharged from the U.S. Army in 2022. Armed with a pen and an entrepreneurial spirit, Vincent quit his day job and decided it was as good a time as any to follow his dream. He went on to publish nine historical fiction novels, five of which have now become Amazon international bestsellers. Vincent's mission is to inspire and empower others through fiction, as well as his marketing services for writers at booksalespro.com. He works with authors so that they can become found by their target readers and earn more sales on Amazon. Vincent, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are super excited to have you yeah thank you guys i I really appreciate it i'm excited to be here i've been looking forward to this i can't wait to talk to you about marketing and amazon and all that stuff but i have to ask some other questions first okay (laughs) okay so (laughs) yeah so this is my non-writing this is my non-writing portion so if you're listening to this um this is important because it 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 matters to me (laughs) so have you been to italy i have Okay, so uh, what's your favorite? I mean, I love Italy. We do the Serious Writer uh, tour every year in Italy. So we've oh, gone to Italy last two years doing a conference. Like, I, you're the be the perfect person to come. Um, you love know, to. but we do it in Tuscany each year. So, what's yeah. your favorite place in like in Italy or Rome? My favorite place has to be the Forum. Um, I'm sure to a lot of people, it's just a bunch of rocks. Um, but just because you know, all of my books. Um, well, most of my books are set in ancient Rome. A lot of the scenes take place right there in the forum, speeches and, uh, you know, uh, elections and, you know, all the, you know, kind of infighting and all this kind of stuff. That, so it was really cool being there. I was just like in awe just to look around and be like, that's that's where Sertorius gave his speech. And, oh, that's where Julius Caesar was, was yeah, cremated. And, you know, like, it's just so much history when you're familiar with it all i mean i loved the coliseum i loved pompeii i loved everything i saw and i mean it was a dream come true um but the forum was probably the highlight for me have you left flowers on julius caesar's death spot or whatever i put some coins on it okay okay. i put some coins on it true he's a true roman uh you know fan so all right good uh so that had nothing to do with writing but i think it's awesome i mean it's great that you I mean, you're writing historical fiction, right? So you you got to go, you got to go see the locations. And I think Rome is fantastic. And so it if was, people haven't read your books yeah. and you are into Rome, especially like men, right? There's this whole thing on TikTok where you got to ask your spouse. How like, often do you think about the Roman, Roman Empire? Rome. Like for me, it's daily, at least multiple times a day, yep. like really legitimately. <laughs> so if that's you, go check out Vince's books. Like this is a, this is a plug he didn't ask for, but I'm going to plug. If you love ancient Rome, you love uh books about military go check out his books and just uh i've checked them out you got some great reviews I mean, th- thousands of reviews like, I don't know, like 7500 reviews in one book so um i've known i've known who you are for a long time and so i, I kind of saw you at the beginning uh and saw your stuff started when you started amazon ads and then i've watched as you just ticked up the charts so it's been neat to see from someone who's in the writing community and so um you're not only a writer but you're a powerful marketer and so that's thing is why we wanted to have you come on one you you could teach a lot of about to our writers about writing just the skill of writing fiction and developing plots and characters and all those things because you do a great job of that um but you also you have managed to be one of the the few who sell your books and i think that's mm. what everybody wants to know in this day and age um there was a big article that just came out recently about how um publishing has changed and now the author is the driver of sales, not the publisher. Yep. So it's important to be able to know how to sell your book. So 
I know we, Bethany and I want to pepper you with some marketing questions. She loves marketing. Uh, so she's got a degree in marketing. So, and talk really about Amazon and kind of what you do, why you got into it would be fun to hear. Just kind of, uh, I know you were like me, a writer who got into the kind mm-hmm. of professional side of things. Cause you know, you got to sell books. So what, what, why did you, my first question is why did you dive into Amazon ads when there's traditional publishing, there's so many other options out there. Why was that your thing that you went to um, and really figured out how to do? Yeah. Great question. So I always knew I wanted to be an author, um, but I, I put it off and put it off um, throughout uh, my that planning phase. You know, when I'm in college and stuff like that, I went to, I went to school for business. Um, I was planning to go into financial planning. My first job at 17 was selling Medicare Advantage and supplement plans, which I had no idea what I was doing, but I took the tests and I passed and the old people seemed to like me and they, they, <laughs> you know, so it, it, that was my background. But when I graduated college, I decided like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. Like I, I was going to wait and do it when I retired and, you know, uh, just, you know, I've always heard you couldn't sell books enough to earn a living. You couldn't feed a family with book sales and that kind of thing. But at the time I had no mortgage, no kids. And, you know, I had, you know, my rent and a few other things. And I had a little bit of money coming in from the army reserve. And I was like, you know what, let's, let's try it. And, um, I didn't have any of the things that people say you have to have platform, you know, social media. I didn't have, you know, I had contacts a little bit through, um, you know, the conferences. I just met some good people, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have the the kind of connections that you you're told you really need. Um, I didn't, you know, a lot of people would have said that there wasn't really a path of success for me. I found that in Amazon. I found an opportunity where uh, it's a system that's completely agnostic to any of those factors. It doesn't care whether you published in your basement or you published in a New York high rise or whatever else, right? They don't care about your platform size or any of those things. If you can convince Amazon that your book will sell and make them money, they'll do the rest, right? That's all that they care about. And so you know, Amazon ads isn't the whole thing, but basically all of it is on Amazon, you know? So um, there's, you know, just working on really, really good metadata, your keywords and your categories. That's a huge thing that I say 90% of the time authors and publishers totally whiff on. Um, there's that Amazon ads. I run discounts on on my eBooks in particular occasionally. Um, I found that if I worked with those algorithms and just maintained sound digital marketing principles, even without social media, without doing blog tours and book signings and, and those sorts of things. Now, if you do any of those things like cup runneth over, that's great. I'm not discouraging anyone from doing it. Um, but I didn't necessarily have any of that in place. And so I just focused on those Amazon elements and it opened up so many doors and, and allowed me to get, you know, into the industry and then it was, you know, very, very quickly that I was then working with authors and publishers to help them do the same thing because uh, not a lot of people were doing it at the time. Right. No, that's, that's great. And so, sorry, my ring is off. <laughs> so um, how long ago did you start with Amazon? I published my first book in July of 2017. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, that was pretty much, um, that was when I just jumped right in full force. How long did it take you to hone in before you really started seeing your ads working for you? That's a really good question. I would say, I don't know that there would be a time exactly there. It was a process of honing in and maybe that's not even done yet, you know, of, and not to mention that the algorithms change. Um, fundamentally they stay the same. I think people would be surprised at like most of the core principles have been around since 1994 when Amazon launched. Um, but there are some things that change in terms of what you need to do to really engage with those algorithms, so on and so forth. Um, but I would say the magic really started to happen when I launched book two. Um, and I think that is, I'm not going to say it's a universal principle. I was able to break even on my first book, like earn back the, the thousands I put into 
editing and cover design and all that kind of stuff. And not, not a lot of people can do that, but you, you it's certainly possible. You can do that. Right. Um, but when you get multiple books out there, two is a good start. Three is better. You know, you just go down the line, more books and more opportunity, bigger digital footprint. Um, it, it means you can be more aggressive with your advertisements because then like, I'm not worried about just trying to break even on a book that I make $3 on, right? right. That's pretty hard to do. But if I have two books that I make $3 each, so then I make six. So then I can be more aggressive with my advertising if I'm trying to sell book one in a series and hope that some of them will go on to buy book two. And so the more books you have, the more aggressive you can be and the more you can invest. And then that just kind of, you know, goes over. So it did take me a long time to understand a lot of the ins and outs, but because I went all in from the very beginning, like I, I had no other recourse. Like I had to study it like a mad scientist until I figured it out. And, uh, so I got the basics down pretty quick, but then from there, it's just a long process of optimization that I don't think really ever ends. Right. Now there's something key that you said at the beginning of book one, thousands of dollars that you invested in cover design. Yeah. How much do you, no, 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 not just cover design. That, sorry, I'm, I'm that may have missed, but I spent like 500 on cover. Okay, I think. so 500 cover. What about what about editing? I spent quite a bit on that first book because a lot of authors, um, especially first time authors, I think overestimate their uh, readiness of their manuscript. They think I've gone through this so many times. There's right. no errors in here. There's very very few. Like I was like, I'm going to be in this industry for a long time. I know we live or die in this industry by our reputation. Yeah. So I was like, I, no, I'm not going to publish this until it's flawless. Of course it wasn't. It was, you know, looking back, like most of the errors were out of it, but it was still very flawed narratively and things like that. You get better as a writer and you improve, but uh, I probably spent maybe 3,500 on the first book okay. on editing alone. Yeah. And it's a 90,000 word historical fiction novel yeah. i did multiple rounds of content and copy editing proofreading um you know so i there's some ways that I've, I've i've like shaved costs over time that like i can do things a little cheaper and there's other areas i invest a lot more in um but i would say overall if i remember correctly start to finish the first book took me about five thousand dollars yeah that's what we normally tell people three and a half to five thousand dollars we say a lot in here that's we call it pretty self standard self-publishing. Well, like I, I'm yeah. against as an agent, I'm against self-publishing. I'm not mm -hmm. against self-publishing. Well, like, yeah. But Amen. You become that, yeah. a publisher where you treat the book as a publisher way and you invest the money that it takes to put a book book out and to market that book. That's, I call it self-publishing. Well, so if you're just going to go on with it, with a terrible cover and no editing, that's self-publishing that is not going to sell. And what right. you've done is you're what we call self-publishing. Well, you've done it. You've invested and then you got to go earn it back, right? So right. marketing. And I've so I've always said that self-publishing as a concept is really an oxymoron. Like you cannot do it yourself. You right. can't. You I I I can think I can count on my hands after after the hundreds and thousands of authors that I've worked with and talked with at conferences and so for over the years. I, I can think of like one or two cases of people who have designed their own covers and had success. Right. Um Agree. You're editing. I don't care if you're an English major or you, you know, studied at the Chicago Institute of Style or whatever, and you you got all that down to the Chicago Manual. Um, like, no, you still need an editor. You need multiple pairs of eyes. Like, self-publishing is it's basically just like making a journal available online, and that's a little you know minimizing, I suppose. And I don't mean to do that, but like, you really do have to have a team. Yeah. um to do it so yeah i like that self self-publishing well i I, yeah. I like that that core concept there so for you the you got you got started in 2017 and invested about five grand so how and that was kind of out the gate but how much did you have to invest in in like your initial slog through the marketing of amazon to really make that five thousand back um so man it's really interesting um I spent, I was probably spending a hundred dollars a month on Amazon ads. And I spent, I did, I ran a free promotion, um, on the ebook. I gave away the ebook for free. Like people don't want to do that a lot of times. And they think it diminishes the value of the product with some of the best books that I've ever read. I got for a dollar at a used bookstore 
that people that, that that author didn't make any compensation off of that. But after I read their book, fell in love with it, went and bought all their others brand new and told a bunch of people about them. So like I've understood that break even marketing sometimes yeah. is extremely valuable. People ask me all the time, like you got thousands of reviews. You know, I, I, I knew like five people that were willing to leave me a review early on. I had six pre-orders total wow. on my first, first launch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, and I have way more than six family members. Right. So there's a lot of people yeah. that dropped the ball there. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I had like six pre-orders and I had like, you know, maybe four or five reviews coming out of the gates. How did I get to a point where my book was like legitimized? I ran a free promotion. I gave a bunch of them away and I spent like $500 hiring sites. There's like free books, see and e-reader news today. There's tons of them out there. Not all of them are very good. Most of them are not good. Um, but there are some that it's a lot of bang for the buck. You pay them $45. They send out an email to their readers, let you know that you have a book for free and you get a flood of downloads and reviews and post uh, promotion, full price right. sales. Um, so I, I spent, I mean, I didn't, I had a very limited marketing budget. Um, like I said, like I took out a loan to fund that $5,000, which I don't recommend anybody doing. I was extremely, you know, risk tolerant, I guess at that point, more so than I am now. Young, young, um, right? Yeah. Young <laughs> and vicious. dumb. Yeah. And, and so took out a loan, I had, I quit my job in financial planning so that I could go full time into writing with very unrealistic expectations. Um, I had like $300 or $250 coming in from the army reserves every month and that was it. So I was extremely tight. All I could afford was, you know, a hundred dollars in Amazon ads or something like that. And then I ran like one or two of those free promos a year where I would put like $500 towards them. And that's all I, all I spent, um, on, on marketing. So yeah. As you're getting started, let's pop into that first best practice. You said your first best practice is to learn the rules and then break them. So you kind of started out breaking some rules, like quitting your job to go into writing. Yeah. Writing. Yeah. How I think, yeah, that first, my first best practice, learn the rules and then break them. You can apply that both to writing and to the business of being an author, right? Um, I find that a lot of people will just break the rules without knowing them and they're content doing that. It's like um, if you don't understand the genre conventions, if you're writing a thriller and you don't really know what it means to be a thriller and you don't understand what people are coming to expect from the genre, then you're just going at it blindly and that's not going to be good. However, if you understand the genre tropes, the expectations, you understand like character archetypes, the three act structure, all of those sorts of things. I think it's actually a pretty good idea a lot of times to break those rules. Right. I'm not a formulaic writer. I don't really believe in, uh, you know, the traditional idea of plot, you know, of like, you know, you got to meet the mentor and then there's the refusal of the call. And like, you don't have to go step by step, but I think you do need to know it. You do yeah. need to know it because it's yeah. part of the mythical structure that forms the, the collective unconscious of of all of our readers right of all of us yeah. so like you have to know it and then you break it if you don't know it then you're breaking it or or you know fixing to it without really knowing and i think the same thing applies to the marketing industry right like you 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 really need to know uh like uh about you know the comprehensive in yeah you know, how do you sell books Right. Like I didn't just not do social media because I didn't know it was a thing, you know, like I understood that people utilize social media to sell books, but then I just decided to hone in on my efforts on a different topic. Right. Um, but I, th so I think that really the, the goal is to learn the industry right. well, know it inside and out, know the different aspects. If you're going traditional, you need to understand what self-published authors are doing and why they're finding success. If you're self, you need to understand what the big trad publishers are doing. What are they doing that you don't have access to or that you could have access to if you made the right contacts or whatever? Um, you need to know all of that so that you can strategically decide where you want to put your focus, your time, your energy, and your your money. Um, so yeah, that, I, I, I think that's a, a really, really big thing, both with writing and in the, in the career of, of writing. Right. Um, 
knowing those rules first and then break them as you see fit. That's good. Now, um, I mean, you've been successful because I'm sure a lot of it was trial and error. And oh, like, yeah, uh, it Absolutely. doesn't sound like you were young and dumb. It just sounds like you're young and motivated. So mm. you got to eat. Right? Motivated. Um, yeah, right. So when it comes down to, to Amazon, let's just stuck Amazon. There are different types of ads on Amazon and they've kind of changed mm. over the last seven years. What are what ads are you seeing that are beneficial now? What type of ads are you running? on Amazon that you would say, Hey, if you're starting out brand new and you've got a book or two or three, this is where I would say, go all in learning this ad type uh, and investing in, in this. Good question. So there's the three broad types of ads. There's sponsored product ads, sponsored brand ads. Thank you, Amazon for making those so close and easily confusable sponsored product, sponsor brand and lock screen ads. 99% of the time when people are talking about Amazon advertisements, they're talking about sponsored product ads. And that's where I spend 99% of my focus. I don't touch lock screen ads anymore. I don't know if it's because I failed to you know, really uh, understand them, but it just seems like there are certain projects it works for, certain genres. It seems like really popular, like romance, mystery, thriller kind of genres will work for it. But lock screen ads are tough. Sponsored brand ads are very good if you have multiple books, if you have multiple books in a series in particular, and they actually just launched the feature that you can run ads that send people to your author page, um, which is really good for a lot of reasons. I'm still doing testing for that for my own books before I'm going to start rolling that out as a service. Um, but the there's some potential implications that are pretty exciting about that. But sponsored product ads are where that's that's what people are talking about most of the time when they're talking about ads on Amazon. Now right. within sponsored products, there's different types of targeting. You can do automatic targeting um, where you're allowing Amazon to decide where they want to show the books. There's keyword targeting where you just put lists of dozens, hundreds, thousands of keywords. And you're saying, Hey, Amazon, you, when somebody types in this phrase or something like this phrase, I want my book to show up as an advertisement. Um, and then there's uh Category ads where we're targeting based on the genres or the categories that your book is in or any other categories on Amazon. And then finally, there's ASIN ads or, or individual product ads where you just drop in a list of all of the Amazon search indicator number, ASIN or ISBN numbers. You drop those in and then your book is being directly targeted to those products that are very similar to yours. When I got started, and I think it really has been this way for most of Amazon ads lifespan, keyword ads were the bread and butter. That's changed. And most of the time when I talk to authors, I meet them at conferences and they're really discouraged with Amazon ads is because they're still running keyword ads. Mm -hmm. um, and not to say you shouldn't run them, but the, like I, 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 there was quite a while when I was doing this where all of the ads that I did was keyword ads. I didn't even bother with the other types because the keyword ads were so efficient. And so effective. They were great for the first few years. Yeah. And I don't, so 2018 marked a major shift in the uh, world of Amazon ads. Essentially Amazon came out and they were like, Hey, we are tired of being last place in the advertising space. We want to be up there with Google and Facebook. And so from now on, we're going to be pushing the ads. Like a lot of the best digital real estate on our store is going to be advertising space and we're going to be pushing it hard. And that's exactly what they did. So I don't know if it was that, or it came a little bit later, but like, it was a slow process of like learning, like, wow, these keyword ads are really not doing what they used to. So the ads that I, I still run all of the types of advertising to really just capture as much of the market as I can. But I would say like nine out of 10 authors that I work with most of the time, the best ad that they're going to have by a landslide are the category ads. Um, category ads, and then the second best probably is automatic ads, where essentially you're allowing Amazon to choose where to show the book. Now those are gonna do virtually nothing for you if your book is not already selling well, or it's not doesn't have built up sales success. Because when we're allowing Amazon to choose where to show the ad, you know, they, like, they need to have a pretty good idea of what the book is about right? And who it's for, what the readers are. And they're going to make that decision based yeah. on sales history. 
And so if your book isn't selling, they're not going to show it. The ads are just not going to do anything. Um, but if your book is already doing pretty well, automatic ads can be absolutely killer. Amazon turns out they're pretty good at this whole recommendation thing they've been doing. So um, the category ads and auto ads are the bread and butter. And the best part is, is you can put both of those up in about 10 minutes, maybe 20. Um, like they're super easy to put up um, if you just, you know, watch some tutorials or, you know, guess, you know, I know that there's a familiarization process, but they're very, very simple as opposed to keyword ads where you're going to spend, you know, potentially hours combing through and creating a list of hundreds or thousands of, of search phrases, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was a very long answer to your question, no, good. but, uh, but yeah, that key category ads and auto ads are my favorite at the moment. It's good with, um, Amazon. It's important to know a cost, which is advertising cost of sale. Yeah. What a, a cost percentage do you try to hit on your ads? I try to hit 70, 70. is my, is my target. Um, because so Amazon ads are extremely misleading in both ways. A lot of times somebody will say, Hey, my ads are terrible and they're not working. They want me to look at them. And I get in and I'm like, Hey, wait, whoa, th these ads are actually really successful. Like you just have to know what to look for. And there's other times where somebody's like, Hey, my ads are killer. And I'm like, actually they're not, you're being misled a little bit because so when you see that sales number there on Amazon ads, like if I sell, if my ebook is priced at $7.99 and somebody buys it, I'm going to show up as $7.99 in that sales column, right? But I'm not making $7.99, right? I'm only making $5 and something cents, right? Yeah. So if, if you have 100% average cost of sale, that means you've spent $100 or whatever it is, and you've earned or the sales column is the same thing. You know, you spend a hundred, there's a hundred in the sales column, but you are not actually taking a hundred dollars home. Right. The 70%, most people make 70% of their royalty for the ebook. So that's what I'm aiming for. Right. Right. If I'm below 70%, that means that if the ebook the, for the ebook sales, I've broken even or better. Um, but the other aspect is, is that a lot of times your A cost might be higher than 70% or it might be over a hundred percent. And it might look like the ads are not very good, but in reality, Amazon ads are showing you very, very little of what they're actually achieving for you. Right? Like every time you sell a book on Amazon, you're going to sell more books, right? right? That's just the general principle. The more you sell, the more you sell. And so you can sell five books on Amazon ads. And it might look like you're breaking even or you're even in the red and it's not going well. But then what you want to do is you got to factor in the fact that all of those five sales are likely, you know, putting you higher in search results organically. You know, they're connecting you with other authors through the also bought system. You're going to get more sales through that. Not to mention if you have five or 10 books or however many and somebody goes to buy a couple more of those or all of those, then you're making way more than you're spending. So Again, a very long answer to a very, very simple question. 70% is about what I aim for, um, but there's a lot of other factors that go into determining That's how great. successful they are. That's great. Um, so when you're saying all this, right, you're, we're using terms that are are really businessy, right? From I know, yeah. Publishing, which is good because your number two is treat writing like a business. <laughs> it's a good tra yes. master transition right there. Um, so one of your, your two you know, things that you you really of your three is treat your writing like a business selling books and writing books. It's a business. It, like there's a difference between hobby writers who just want to write for fun, but if you want to wrong with that and you want to be a career writer or you want to just have a lot of books out and can you do it? You've got to think of this as business from book cover yeah. design to editing, to um, Amazon, to, you know, social media, whatever you're in. And so what you're saying is you're, you're actually looking at metrics. You're treating this as a business yeah. with which you are investing your time, your resources, your money in beyond just the writing. And I know some writers just like to write. That's all they want to do. The problem is to sell books. You can't just write a hundred percent of the time. It doesn't really work. What do you think you spend in, in time? How much time do you spend writing versus advertising? What's your balance? Um, in theory, what I want to do is I want to spend 90% of my time writing or maybe 80. And that's an aggressive number. Most people, especially that are advertisers would say that's crazy. Like, you need to you need to spend you know a lot of time marketing. If you're going to be layering in things like blogging, 
you know, doing uh, podcast tours or, you know, uh, book signings. Uh, social media is the big one. We all know that you can spend a ton of time on so that all takes a significant amount of time with Amazon ads, with your metadata, um, with running price promotions periodically. Like those are the three core practices that I utilize. I, my goal is like an hour a week on, on, on marketing. And then now there's times around a launch or a specific promotion where I'm spending a lot more time. But I do think you cannot just write, like you said. It just doesn't work in the modern infrastructure of this industry. You can't just write, but you really you need a lot of products, a lot of times to really hit you know to get the traction going. So like, I'll I'll, I'll meet a lot of authors that they have one book out there, and they're spinning their wheels, spending 10, 20 hours a week marketing advertising promoting their books and it's like you're kind of running on a treadmill a little bit you know like spend some time on it don't don't you know just give up and and you know you got to keep working on it but like i think a lot of us like it's hard to sit down at the keyboard and write even for us professional authors and um so a lot of people will they're right. actually avoiding writing by marketing. So I think there's a really fine balance that you want to find there. Right. Um, so, no, I, I think that's, I think that's helpful to hear your perspective on that. I mean, if they're doing social media, we usually say 60, 40, like you social media takes a lot of time. It's a huge investment. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, ads you can run and you can let them go and kind of check them later. <laughs> social media, exactly. Constant content. So it just depends on really where your balance is to, to, to do mm -hmm. your marketing. And uh, that's why you treat writing as a business in the sense of you're doing it in the way that's working for you. And your third best practice was invest wisely in the business, which you said your first book is about five grand invested. You, I, how much do you average right now per book? Would you say you're investing? I'd probably say I'm at like 3,500. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've made contacts in the industry where we kind of like service swap a little bit, you know, so like, uh, I can get things done a little cheaper than I would be. Otherwise I do my own interior design. I use Vellum or Atticus um, to interior. Yeah. Design my interiors. Like I might not do that if I had like a really complex, like Bible study or something like that, where you'd probably want somebody with InDesign to do that for you. Um, but with, you know, full length fiction novel, like it's not very difficult. So that saves, you know, three, $400 every time. Um, probably like 3,500 to get a book out there and published. It can vary. And then the marketing costs just vary considerably based on what I'm doing. But the advertising is probably, I spend three or $400 a month on advertising on Amazon, probably five or 600 on Facebook ads. Um, and then just periodic, you know, promotions. What's so your normal price that you sell uh, an ebook for these days? I have a ladder approach. So still to this day, the first book in the series, The Man with Two Names, I have it two ninety nine. When I'm advertising that one, I understand that I'm breaking even at best and I'm probably losing, but I'm getting people into the series. And if it's good enough and people read the whole series, then I'm going to make a lot more than I was in, you know, paying. So it's like two ninety nine, three ninety nine, three ninety nine. Five ninety nine, seven ninety nine, or something like that, and I'm gonna just keep going from there. Never gonna go over nine ninety nine, at least, you know, anytime soon, because then you'd be going out of the seventy percent royalty structure. Um, but uh, I, 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 the average price, the most recent number that I have is twenty twenty one was three ninety nine was the average ebook price across all of Amazon. I think that's going up. Um, I think we're we're closer to four ninety nine now than we ever have been. When I started out, it was like two ninety nine or bust. Like you had to be cheap. Right. Um, the the market's tolerating a little bit higher, but it comes down to like I my discussion on pricing is always like how many reviews do you have? How does that compare? It's all about comparing your book to your closest competitors. You know, do that? Do you have name value compared to theirs? Is it longer? Is it a better product? Do you have more reviews? Because like if you're lower on some of those things, like you're going to need to price lower to justify you know, the purchase of your book. If you have more reviews, if it's longer, if it's a better product, like you can price a little bit higher. Um, but like, I think 499 is kind of my starting point right now for most projects. And then going up or down from there based on the genre and the book itself and where the author's 
at what they're trying to do. That's good. And you've written, have you t 10 books? Is that what you've been? My 10th is, I'm hoping to Coming publish out. my 10th next month. Okay. And um, so series are, are important. Are all 10 series in the so series? Important. No, I've got five in one series. Two are novellas. Um, they're like spinoffs um, that are like, really, they're reader magnets. They're getting people to sign up for my newsletter um, as their primary focus. Um, and then I have two in a crime thriller genre, like 1930s kind of mafia stuff. It's a lot of fun, but I, whenever I need a break from warfare, I go to like, you know, mafia hits. So really uh, fun, fun stuff, right? <laughs> um, so, but, so I've got really two main series that I'm working on, but the Rome books are where I, that's my bread and butter, gotcha. you know? So how do you see like standalones and novellas sell compared to the series? It's one of the questions in the chat. So good. Like Such a good question. So um, I am a huge believer in series from a marketing standpoint. You just can't avoid it. Um, if you do standalones, is there any way that you could in make a, a series of standalones? I know that sounds crazy, but like that's that people do that now a lot, you know, um, like that completely unrelated books, but they're in the same as long as they're in the same genre or they're for the same target audience. If there's even some kind of prevailing, you know, find theme. something, right? <laughs> right. So, like a year um, uh, setting, uh, you yeah, know, right. Anything. I, books are one books of my most old. successful, <laughs> you know? one of the most successful authors I'm working with right now. All of his books take, or not all of them, but a lot of his books take place in like the Civil War era, um, Underground Railroad era, that kind of stuff, right? Like none of them have characters. It's all different stories but they're the same time period and the same overall three er, theme. So like he created a series out of those. And I think you can do that. Nonfiction books. Absolutely. Pe people didn't used to think you could do that. Like we think of series as like sequential. Um, they have to be, you know, like uh, chronological, so to speak. They don't like um, boundaries by Henry cloud, for example, is a good example. Like he's got a series of books, boundaries for couples, boundaries for, um, teenagers, boundaries for, you know, whatever else, right? Um, you know, the, the, there's a series of books that are just over a similar topic. So like from a marketing standpoint, it's hard to ignore the utility there because when somebody buys book one, the likelihood that Amazon is going to recommend the other books in your series to them is astronomically higher. Um, standalone books, you can still have success in. Um, you really, you can uh but it's tough with novellas i don't know of any authors that i can say are having financial success with novellas at the moment that's not to say you can't of course but i think novellas can be extremely useful in building a name brand um getting people to follow you to subscribe to you give them away for free on your website Mark them, you know, do 99 cents on Amazon. Like, no, you're, you're, you're going to be making a pittance. You're not going to make your money back on that novella, but it's building your author brand that you can then make money on full price books or, right. you know, and full books. So it's all about how things are leveraged. Right. Um, but standalone books are definitely harder to build traction in. What about, I'm sure through your, your company, you've worked with, with authors of nonfiction. How, how does this relate to nonfiction? versus fiction or you just totally stay in nonfiction or, or fiction? So I actually probably would say I probably work with more nonfiction authors than fiction. Um, just There's just a lot of, especially in the Christian writing space, a lot of nonfiction authors. I've worked with a lot of both. I've worked with children's authors, uh, you know, business books. I mean, you pick a genre, I've probably worked with it a little bit. Um, most of the principles are the same. Um, things like expectations are going to be different. Like if you write a book, like a, a serious historical discourse on like the Roman forum or something like an archeological study, that right. might be a book that I would buy to research for my books. If it's got five or six good reviews, like that's probably good enough for me. I'm not expecting it to have thousands. If I'm buying a mystery thriller suspense, you know, something in that genre, like I'm expecting a lot more reviews. Right. Um, I'm also expecting very different price points. Um, mystery thriller suspense are going to typically going to be way cheaper than, you know, a, a historical, like academic kind of book. Right. Those are obviously broad, you know, uh, kind of a spectrum there, but like nonfiction and fiction 
generally speaking, the same principles apply. It just, it's going to change up how you want to present things in some aspects. Um, but the, but the, the strategies work for both the interchangeably. Are you seeing success with children's and nonfiction now through Amazon ads? Are you seeing that success is different? I think they, they, they're the same, um, uh, or uh, not necessarily the same, but you, you, any, any book, any genre can have a lot of success with Amazon ads. Um, I've worked with extremely niche books that have had a lot of success with Amazon ads. And I've worked with very, very popular genres that don't, um, you know, it really just comes down to uh, presentation, uh, how often you're willing to optimize and work on those to get them to that place. Children's books. Absolutely. Um, it's just slightly different. You're going to be selling a lot more paperback copies generally than eBooks. Um, you need to price things differently. It, it's, it is definitely a different process. Right. Children's books are nuanced, um, cause you're targeting the parents and not, not the children. Um, so there's, it's a nuanced approach, but you can definitely still find success. There's very, very few genres that I've worked with that I'm just like, you're not going to be able to do Amazon ads. I, like, I can't really think of any, as long as it applies to their terms of service and you're not going to get rejected, like you can usually make them work. Well, that's great. And you help authors with your book sales pro. So uh, we should mention that you have a company it's called book sales pro. You can check it out. Uh, I'm sure we'll send out a, a link to an email here to anyone who's watching now or later um, that, that can kind of get you connected with Vincent. If you've got some books out that you want to, uh, invest in. I think my, my advice as an agent is, you know, try to have more than one. You're going to like, yeah. for me, I hate when people go and work with, with people and companies like Vincent, when they got one book because of what Vincent said at the beginning, you really need some of that sell through to make the ads work price-wise. So yeah, I think for me, you'll see more success with two, three, four books because you can take some more risk, which is important right? You can, you can advertise a little bit more and then you'll see success as that book one sells the book two, sells book three, sells book four. And then you'll be like, Vincent's a genius. <laughs> so, yeah, right. and he's just like, well, you had enough content for me to help you sell. So it makes me look uh, a lot smarter. Yeah. So um, I would say if you're on the verge, if you've got one book out and you know, and you're on verge of having another, get it out. And then, and then, you know, bookmark book sales pro and go back and reach out. I think you'll be a happier client and you'll be happier with your results when you know that you have the opportunity to, to see that money work for you. And you'll hopefully, you know, have some of the similar success that Vincent's had over the years. It's been fun to watch, um, you know, cause we are in the same circles all the time. So it's fun to watch Vincent, you know, go from a guy who's, you know, writing books to starting to speak at conference now to be an expert in this field. So it's been kind of fun to watch as an outsider. So congrats, Vincent, keep, keep it up. And uh, hopefully uh, some of our people who, desperately need to work on their Amazon categories and, and, and just keywords and whatever they're going to do for their ads. They reach out to you and see how you can help them. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed this. Well, great. Um, and so if we can, uh, just afterwards, we're going to stop recording. Thank all of you for, for being here and we're going to stay on with our patron members for just give them a chance to ask any questions of Vincent. And, uh, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for being here, Vincent. Uh, hopefully some more people will check you out. We, we definitely think that you know what you're talking about. That's why we had you on. And uh, it's been, you know, uh, if you like to read historical fiction set in Rome, that's military, you should check out Vincent's books. Uh, you can look Vincent B. Davis, the second, right? Is that, do you mm -hmm. have that that's book? right. On yeah. Amazon and follow him. And uh, we'll probably, I'm sure we'll put a, another link out when we uh, do the follow up to this. So you can go access those directly to his, his author page, but check out one of his books at least and support what he's doing and for his time that he gave us. So thanks for being here and we'll stay on with the patron Patreon members. Thanks, Kyle. This is Serious Writer.